Martin. Um, I am from Kenya. I have been here for one year. I'm doing a master's in the Department of Popular Culture. Um, this fall I'll be starting my second and last year of my master's studies here at Bowling Green State University. Um, hi, I'm Laura O'Brien. Uh, I live in Bowling Green, Ohio, a graduate from Bowling Green State University. Hi, my name is Julius Okango and I am from Kenya. My first question to you is, uh, what do you think of when you hear the word cosmopolitanism? So when I think, uh, when I hear about the word cosmopolitanism, I think about uh, somebody who is conversant with a lot of languages, for instance, cultures, and um, somebody who is just knowledgeable about the world in general. I think of somebody who's like very, I don't know, somewhere like hip and trendy, <laughs> I feel like. Um, <laughs> Like, live in New York City, they, I, 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 I don't know, it's hard to describe, but yeah. I think, uh, someone, I don't know, it's a, a city person I will feel like, that's kind of yeah. how I feel, okay. Uh, at first, when I, I had anything cosmopolitan, I would tell you it means a place where people from many different regions or ethnic uh, backgrounds are residing together, they interact and, and such kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so mostly I, I used to associate it with places. So uh, I never associated, I, I never thought people could be termed as cosmopolitan until I realized that Cosmopolitanism is an ideology that um, you know embraces uh, um, someone who thinks that they should be, or they think they can be like everyone else, despite the fact that they do not maybe belong to the same race with them, the same ethnic uh, background with them, and so on. So, yeah, it's like I have come to a kind of realization what it really is. Yeah. Are there like specific things or you know, characteristics of a person you would associate with that idea like you know what they wear or how they speak things like that? Um, I guess when it's for very like up to date with you know like the, you're saying how they look like, like how they dress and the way they do their hair and, Someone who's very trendy and knows what goes together and what is the latest fashion, things like that. <laughs> So for me, when I, I associate that term with a person, I think of someone who is elite, mm -hmm. educated, because for you, um, that's one way of it, like when in the academia, that's how I can relate the word cosmopolitanism with it. But when I think of it in another way, I think uh, any person can be cosmopolitan regardless of the academic standards or whatsoever, because uh, the people who have never gone to school, uh, for example, in Kenya, but they know like three languages mm -hmm. and they know a lot of cultures and they, uh, their values are really deeply rooted in those cultures. So I would say that it goes two way. Uh, for I think especially when you think about Western versus um, uh, third world countries, for instance, or Africa. I think someone with cosmopolitan is able to embrace or um, to think of people not based on just what he himself or he, she herself believes in or think is the right thing or such kind of things. Mm. I think someone who is cosmopolitan can uh, be of a certain faith, for example. They could be a Christian mm. and they might, not, they, are, they, couldn't, they might not think that only Christians are right in how they view things. Yeah. Someone who is cosmopolitan is able to embrace um, people of other faiths, for example, people of other nationalities, people of other uh, ethnic backgrounds, 
but someone who is not is likely to be more subjective and more biased for that matter. Yeah. Does that mean like you know, to be cosmopolitan you have to uh, have a lot of money or you, know, you have to belong to like a particular group or something like that? I feel like money kind of fit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say you're I wouldn't expect to hear someone who's on the city as near cosmopolitan. I feel like you're like, yeah, that person's super cosmopolitan. I don't know that's a phrase that's said very often, but uh, <laughs> uh, I guess a certain amount of money comes with it, a certain amount of a certain type of work goes with it. Um, white collar work, I feel like, goes with that. So, trendy businessman living in New York City in a high rise. Yeah. If you call it cause of faults, then I'd probably agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, do, you, do you think it would be difficult for somebody who lives in, uh, you know, Western Ohio or even Bowling Green Ohio for that matter? So um, somebody lives in a small town, do you think it would be difficult for them to to reach that? Yeah, I don't. It's it very yeah. strange to call somebody from Bowling Green, Ohio. Or what was the other city you said? Western, it's like a small town. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. expect it would be like, yeah, they you know, free. I, I, yeah, I don't think it would be accurate accurately called that for me <laughs> from there. Yeah. I don't think I, you could call me that. Oh, yeah, she's super cosmopolitan. <laughs> I don't think uh, that's what people would call me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, ha have you seen uh, some difference uh, in the attitude of people, uh, you know, from place to place? For example, somebody who lives in Nairobi uh, might be facing, or you know, uh, he might be familiar with so many different uh, cultures and languages and because it's a big city, lots of people. Whereas yeah. somebody living in a small place might not have the same exposure. exposure. So yeah, do you think absolutely. Some uh, absolutely. So what happens in Kenya, let's say uh, if you go to cities, uh, most likely, I think to me what I have experienced, it goes the opposite way. Okay. So when you go to Nairobi, you lose languages and even if you look at ki children who are raised up in Nairobi, they can't speak these other languages. Mm. So the more you move to the metropolitan cities, the more you lose these uh, languages and cultures. So you adapt these uh, urban cultures and all those ways of life. And if you move down to like rural areas, like uh, outskirts of the city, you acquire more like uh, your language, your culture. So that's how I think it works in Kenya. That's from my view. And mm. having actually lived in both sides, I can definitely see that. And having like family members who live and have kids who like give give birth to ki to children in Nairobi, I can definitely see the difference between them and me because they can't speak any language because of how they interact with other kids in school mm -hmm. who cannot speak any other language. So the parents just decide to teach them uh, the national language, which yeah. is Swahili, and the official language, which is English. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'll speak in respect to myself because uh, I was born and raised in the countryside, a part of Kenya that is in the eastern side of Kenya, a city called Meru. Mm -hmm. It is majorly, the people who live in Meru and especially the countryside are majorly from one specific community. My community, which, uh, which also gives the, 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 the area its name, it's the Meru community. People speak in the language Kimeru, the, the, the language of the people there. Most of the time that is what is done because almost everyone is a Meru. People uh, practice um, the same kind of um, uh, economic activities like farming um, and, and, and maybe um, businesses, running businesses here and there. So people are predominantly doing the very kind, the same kind of things most of the times. 
uh, about seven years I was living in Nairobi, although I was traveling back and forth from Nairobi. And I realized there is a big difference. People in Nairobi are more exposed. People in Nairobi are not from one community. People in, um, they are from different communities. I, I for one, when I went to, uh, to campus, uh, in my first year of study, um, one of my roommates was um, from a community called Trukana. The other one from a community called the Luo. And the other one was from a community called the Luya. All of them, uh, all, all of us were from these different places. Um, so we were, the four of us were sharing one room and we were from all these different communities. Each of us had different kind of um, practices. Yeah. When it comes, for, for example, to initiation, every one of us had their way of doing it. Um, we could not speak Kimeru, mm -hmm. my language. Yeah. We had to speak either Swahili, because that's a language that yeah. is understood all over Kenya, or English. Mm -hmm. And most of the times, the slang, the, 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 the slang that is very common in, in Kenya, that is known as Sheng. So, you see, and then I started realizing these people are not thinking the same way I, I think about various things. I thought, wow, they are wrong. Yeah. But then with time I realized, no, they may not be necessarily wrong. Yeah. They may be right in another manner. It's only that, you know, I'm not used to their way of doing things. Yeah. The one culture that's kind of dominating and then uh, other like smaller cultures, kind of like at the margins, they like, hey, we are all together, you know, but not, you know, not really, you know, in the big beats. In terms of people consider cosmopolitan, I feel like a lot of times you're going to see upper class white Americans. Yeah. Um, in the terms of we're kind of describing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's the group that's able to break in to be able to be considered cosmopolitan. Yeah. Um, but once oh yeah, I've seen a lot of you know, Greek people, I definitely consider them cosmopolitan, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, and I don't think there's a culture that has an influence on some ordinary people kind of have a positive there, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't say that of Nairobi. Okay. I would say that of a place like Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Mombasa is a coastal town mm -hmm. uh, where um, most, uh, okay, where the, the people who used to live there before it became so cosmopolitan yeah. Yeah. were the Swahili. Mm -hmm. And the, the dominant language in Mombasa is Swahili. Mm -hmm. And it's something they are proud of. It's mm -hmm. because Swahili is big in yeah. East Africa. Yeah and there is Swahili food, there is so much about Swahili that, you know, people kind of like. Yeah. So most people who go to Mombasa, even those who might not like speaking in Swahili, mm -hmm. find themselves doing it, yeah. and even being proud of it. Yeah. And when they go back to the countryside, they speak in, you know, that Mombasa Swahili, especially if they've been there for some time. So the, the culture in Mombasa dominates others that come in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's different in Nairobi. Okay. In Nairobi, it's like a, a new culture gets born. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's a culture, I would say, of the young people. Mm -hmm. Because um, it's mostly the young people who use the slang I, I told you about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you will find even the the older guys, the people who are in their fifties uh, uh, and all that, trying to speak Shang. Mm -hmm. And people from Luo land, for example, they don't come here and start speaking in Luo unless they meet someone who is a Luo. Mm -hmm. But then you would not say their culture is dominating. Mm -hmm. In Nairobi, I would say it's it's all of it's a, a different culture altogether. Like okay. it's a culture that is being born, yeah. and um, it's like, yeah.
Yeah. yeah so Swahili and English are uh, have really dominated all the other languages I would say like by far mm -hmm. if you compare it to 10 years ago yeah. I think it, you could say by 80 or 90 percent especially in the capital city because what happens is um, when these people move from these rural areas to urban areas they try to like raise their kids uh, the children in the modern way like yeah. the town way of life uh, they don't want them to like they don't value like these traditional languages more because they put more focus on English and Swahili mm -hmm. especially with globalization and the idea that oh English is going to be a global language everyone has to know yeah. so that has really affected the uh, language especially in Nairobi mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't want to expose their children to uh, other languages. Another thing that has contributed to that is intermarriages. So when they move to these uh, cities like Nairobi, they find people from different tribes, you know, as opposed to just when you live in your small town or in a village where people are from the same tribe as you, you just marry from your same tribe and you can speak the same language. Yeah. So when people move to these uh, uh, metropolitan towns in search of jobs and all that, they end up intermarrying with people from different tribes. So you end up marrying somebody from a different, uh, who speaks a different language from you and that uh, contributes to children losing their, uh, we call it like tribal languages. Hmm. Uh, how do you think international students have assimilated into uh, like um, the thing they're doing fine? Yeah, I, I, I think they do fine. I think uh, in the beginning they struggled just like everyone. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like everyone kind of picks up and they figure out what their version of American culture is. Yeah. It's not cut and dry, it's not this is American culture. Yeah. If you do this, you are American. Yeah. I think they find their version where they take our American influences that they're seeing and they're living it around yeah. and, and they take their own culture and they kind of make their own version of yeah. um, how they're going to live and how they're going to combine the two. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, they haven't figured out a lot of American culture, so then it's harder to figure out how am I going to fit in, how am I going to, I think you have to fit in. Yeah. To an extent, you do. Yeah. You can't just yeah. go on living one way. Yeah. Everyone else is living another yeah. way. Yeah. You can try. Yeah. It's super easy. You can't with Echo and Sebastian. Okay. If, there, if there's anything else that you'd like to say, you know, you're free to say, but I, I don't have any other questions. Um. So, in regard to cosmopolitanism, yeah. assimilation. Yeah. Yeah, I think that colonialism was negative yeah. and it had a lot of negative effects to the country, Kenya, that are being felt up to date. Yeah. Colonialism brought Western education, which many people confuse with civilization. Mm -hmm. they, they think that Western education is civilization. Yeah. I don't think so. Because civilization is not is not doing things my way. Yeah. And so the white guys wanted us to believe that, you know, you are doing this because you're primitive. Mm. What's primitivity? Yeah. <laughs> and they, they wanted to say, you know, you people are doing this we do things this way because we are the civilized guys here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't think that uh, there is anything really about civilization uh, that... Um, I don't consider Western education to be civilization. It's good. It's something that helped uh, us to connect with the rest of the world, but it, it's, not, it, it's not equitable to civilization as an, an aspect. Yeah. So people's view really differ. So if you interviewed somebody else from Kenya, be sure our views might be very different yeah. because of where somebody was raised, the social economic status of how they were brought up. Mm -hmm. The views kind of like vary a lot yeah. depending on um, where 
how and socioeconomic status where yeah. they went to school yeah. so people tend to have like very different views on issues be it social political language culture it really varies a lot so i think yeah. you should if you're doing an interview with other kenyans you should try to look at that differences and how we answer your questions i think that would yeah. be interesting yeah.